Hello Faustus, my name's Andrew, I'll be correcting your essay today and I work here at IELTSpodcast.com with Ben and the others. Thanks for sending in your essay on international marketing. Uh, we do recommend that students complete this one first. It explores your vocabulary and knowledge of the topic of globalisation. The question might talk about international marketing, but it's specifically, if we read it fully um, and explore it slightly, it's specifically about the globalising world. International marketing is simply a symptom of the fact that nations are trading. So what we need to do first is think of all of the topic specific vocabulary that we're going to need to use to make sure that our language is varied and that we're going to have some flexibility. So it helps to have a quick run through um, of the sorts of words you will you will need in this sort of essay. So we're going to need to say marketing in a variety of ways, sales, advertising, promotion. We're going to need to say international in a variety of ways, uh, global, um, across borders. There are plenty of phrases to use, but if we just use 10 to 20 seconds at the start of the exam to think of all the words and the phrases that we may need to use um, for variety, we'll have a much easier time when writing. The next step is to decide how we feel about it or what we believe and apply that perspective to two distinct ideas. So the fact is in the question, one idea is that it is invasive and intrusive and one idea is that it is necessary for spreading education and ideas, language and culture for the economics of it. So we need to work out how what we believe regarding those two ideas and then express them well. And when I say express them well, I mean we need to express them concisely. Our ideas must be put across in as simple and factual terms as possible. We must fully explore and expand and support every point that we make and every point must have its own paragraph. So a paragraph essentially tells an idea in, in about four sentences. So that's what we're aiming for, to be concise, to be on point. Let's have a quick read. There are a great variety of different products and services. Moreover, many companies provide, pro, many companies provide, so it would be company provides or companies provide the same services. Okay, so what I can already see here is that we have um, more words than are necessary. Let me give you a quick example of how we could condense all of this into one sentence. So here, I've rewritten your entire introduction um, using only two sentences, uh, three sentences, sorry, which is essentially what you want, around three sentences. And this contains all of the same information that was in your introduction, but in fewer words. So a great variety of products are provided by a myriad of competing companies. Marketing across borders is essential to remaining competitive, but many believe that international marketing is intrusive and unwelcome. I personally believe that global sales are a necessary and positive feature of the globalizing world. So we have introduced the idea, we've considered both sides and given our opinion, and we've done it in a very efficient way. And that is called brevity. Brevity is the art of saying a lot with few words, and it is highly regarded in academic writing. So take that as an example. Um, compare it with your version, and you can see that the flow, the it generally it it runs smoother in the mind. So now let's see how you expressed your ideas in your paragraphs. People in favour in favour of I would just say people in favour of marketing or 
people in favour of this method of promotion. People in favour of this, this method of promotion. No, I would say, so this is confusing, because you said people in favour, but then gone negative to say that, um, to say essentially the opposite. So this becomes a confusing sentence. You need to make sure that you express your ideas as clearly as possible and as simply as possible, but as accurately as possible. So a paragraph should be four sentences. In the first one, we generally introduce the idea. We don't necessarily give much detail or any opinion. We just generally introduce the idea. And then in the second sentence, we expand into it. What's our point? Where are we going? What are we saying? And then the third sentence should be an example um, for something from re the real world that you can say to back up your point. Because you need to show why you are thinking this. Um, what area are you thinking in? What are you thinking? Why do you think that? What does that mean? Answer those four questions with a paragraph. And here as well, keep your opinion in the intro and the conclusion. Only state facts in the body paragraphs. Express an idea in four sentences. Express an idea in four sentences. Summarize what those ideas mean. So some notes on structure and flow there, essentially. What I'd like to see um, is you work on those by possibly reading. I think reading and listening would help you a great deal uh, in getting an idea of the flow of natural sounding sentences. But other than that, if you would like to receive uh, access to our sentence guide course, which, re which features eight essay corrections from me, including task ones and task twos, then you can follow the links in the email or on the website that you're currently on. Um, and I hope to see I hope to see some more of your work soon. It would be nice to have to correct some more of it. But until then, Faustus, have a lovely day. I hope to speak to you soon. Bye bye now.